Many thanks for staying with us and welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. It's time now to review headlines on today's newspapers. Steve, what have you got for us? All right, thank you, Abby. Uh, I think we should start with uh, the window story. Uh, and these day, we start, of course, with this, this day newspaper, the newspaper of record. Uh, the window story says, Owa Kingdom Alive for Princess Margaret Obagbina's burial today. Uh, and the writer, Okoa Ganduje, Prince Agatushe Radioa, Amosun Emifili Jimovia Abadwigwe attend service of songs. And if you tie that uh, to the cover picture, uh, service of songs for Princess Margaret Obagbina, you see the caliber of people who attended uh, yesterday's service of song. In the picture, we have uh, Ben Obi, we have Kashim Ibrahim Imam, uh, former governor of Anambra, Anambra Emeka, uh, of Imo, Emeka Ihedioa, Governor Abdullah Ganduje of Kano, uh, with Prince Obagbina himself, the Delta State Governor, who's also the vice presidential candidate of the PDP, Dr. Ife Ifai Okoa, who's like the host governor, <laughs> by the way, and Sakin Dawaki uh, Baba of Kano, Alaji Aminu Baba uh, Danagundi, during the service of songs. You know, it was tasked or dead, uh, very befitting you know, of uh, Mrs. Margaret Obaigbena, who will be buried today. So I thought that uh, we should start with that yeah. uh, in celebrating, you know, a woman of substance who lived to a ripe old age. Right. But coming to the lead story, which you will find in many uh, of the newspapers that we have today, Bonn, uh, NGE, which is the Guild of Editors, NUJ Kick, as NBC orders closure of AIT Repar, Silverbird TV and 50 other stations. What is at stake? Uh, the writer says 2.6 billion debt triggered revocation, says regulator. Move to ensure immediate compliance using security agencies. You can understand, Abby, yeah. why many newspapers will be uh, interested in this matter, even though this is a broadcast uh, media yeah. issue, you know, for the NBC. 54 uh, stations are involved, and NBC is saying because they have been owing uh, some money for like one year, renewal of their licenses, etc. Uh, they are left with no choice now other than to uh, ask them to shut down, revoke their licenses, and ensure compliance using security agencies and all the offices uh, of the NBC across the country. It might interest you to know that beyond the big names that you have here, AIT, Repower, Silver Bay TV, uh, 22 out of the other 50 are actually state-owned uh, television and radio stations. Who, you argue that this is a government regulator now trying to close down 22 of another government um, broadcast stations all across the country. What are the issues? Well, if you go strictly by the law, NBC will be seem to be right. But then things are not just legalistic. Uh, we live in a country where everybody can see what is happening. Uh, so the position, the intervention of all the industry organizations like the Bond, like the Guild of Editors, like the NUJ, is to say that, listen, we've, we've already intervened, especially Bond, Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, to say that, yes, we know that they are owing, but then we've been discussing with you, uh, those affected have been discussing with you, if you put together what has happened post-COVID, and then will the Russia-Ukraine uh, war, inflation, everything, it is obvious that not many companies, uh, including uh, newspaper or broadcast organizations, will be able to uh, deliver on their obligations. So they are basically asking for debt, you know, uh, to res reschedule the debt. The same way that governments will do when they owe banks or when they owe international, you know, uh, uh, lenders. That's, that's the thing to do. It's not to say that, I mean, if Nigeria were to be owing the United States or China, they don't come, you know, uh, barging in and say, take over, which is what NBC seems to be doing. Right. Is there a need for negotiation? That's what Bonn and all the other organizations are asking for. Give them more time, let them reschedule, and then show understanding, show empathy. Uh, there was nothing in terms of palliatives given to anybody, either organizations or individuals, all through the COVID era, all through this time. In, in the UK, in other places all around the world, people are saying that how do we mitigate uh, the effect of inflation? 
on people. But here you are saying that because they are unable to deliver on their obligations, shut them down. Yeah, it Close definitely sounds like a very draconian uh, it's, approach it's draconian to, indeed, to indeed. addressing <laughs> the issue. But, but you also mentioned understanding where they're coming from, that's the NBC. Yeah. But, but, but let's talk about, do we have any picture on prior to COVID and prior, do we have any picture of habitual behavior on the part of the broadcasters as well in terms of these payments if, that if, would if we cause did, for this kind of if draconian? We did, it is obvious that they have always negotiated and it will mean that times were different. Uh, there is a major ecogen excuse on the part of the affected organizations now that COVID and the state of the economy globally, you know, have affected uh, their revenue drive. And they are not, I mean, so many of these, station, of these stations are owing salaries. They can't even fulfill their obligations to their staff, let alone to renew, you know, their licenses. So it is tough for them. I do not think that for most uh, of the affected organization is a case of negligence or they don't want to pay. It's just a case of dwindling revenues and right. they are struggling. The same way that the federal government of Nigeria is struggling. State yeah. government are struggling. Why is the federal government on, uh, uh, not able to fulfill its obligations to us? Mm. For example, why is the federal government uh, withholding uh, the money due to the airline operators, international airline operators, that Emirates has asked to you know, cancel all their flights to Nigeria? And we are thinking that it might get to a stage that we will have to be boarding from Togo or Ghana, if for or more of the other affected airlines, you know, also go the way of Emory. So things are tight, things are difficult, and I do not think that a, a NBC should see itself as a revenue generating agency. You are a regulator. Show concern, show understanding, show empathy. show empathy. I'm not saying that they should forget. If it comes to it, why not? There was a time that the Obama administration in America had to rescue the media industry in America because his position at that time was that we couldn't, they couldn't allow the, the established traditional media to go off track and allow social media alone to right. take over. If it comes to that, why can't the federal government you know, consider a bailout? And of course, let's not forget the immediate knock of if, if, you know, effect of, of this action would be loss of jobs. Absolutely. So we in a more precarious situation. Loss of revenue. And if you loss have of a business that is well. saying, I'm not able to pay now, but I can restructure and reschedule my obligations to you. But then if you close them down, where else will, which other licenses will you, uh, uh, will you give out? There are at least a, a whole chunk of people who have, who have licenses from the NBC, but who, are, who have not been, been able to start operations at all. Do you see an amicable re resolution to the situation? I think that Bond, Bond, the tone of Bond's letter is very reconciliatory. It's very understanding, you know, and it shows that this is, this, these are people who understand business. Mm -hmm. I think NBC will have to be advised uh, by the Honorable Minister, you know, of Information, Tourism and Culture, which is the supervisory um, uh, ministry to the NBC. And even if, if it's possible, escalate it to the presidency. Because the same way uh, that your creditors are showing understanding to you is the same way that you should show understanding to NBC. We're not saying write off clearly, but if it comes to that, why not? Given, you know, the time that we are in. That's what other people are doing in different clients. Look at Ghana, for example, today. Uh, Ghana's currency is now the second worst performing currency in the world. Yeah. Everybody is struggling, but show empathy, show understanding, not draconian laws. Absolutely. Okay, uh, which other story do we have uh, in this day? On top of the lead, reconciliation, Team Atiku, Team Atiku's meeting with Team Wiki in Porakot deadlocked. Mimiko, there are some issues requiring further deliberation. Ghana begs Rivers Governor to stay in PDP. We've been on this Atiku Wiki forever. Yeah. And, and it, will, it will take a while for resolution to come. As far as both parties are maintaining their leaders, saying this is what this is what I want, and the other party say this is the only thing I can give, it will look to me like uh, it will continue to be deadlocked. And they both seem to be on that track. It, it looks like it. So this could be a bit of a drag out. Well, let's see how it goes. We just have to wait. <laughs> Campaigns will start for the presidential election by the end of September. Let's see if things will you know change a bit by yeah. that time.
Should We're going to have to wait around to see. Yeah. Yes, let's go very quickly. We have disquiet as federal government shuts down 52 broadcast stations, yes. which we just spoke about. Uh, let's try. The Guardian. You know, you, That's the Guardian. Yeah, let's look at this. Is the Guardian? Okay. Um, but, but I it's feel the same like story yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. You, you said something about Asu earlier, and I think I saw that story somewhere. Okay, so but do we have that on on the Vanguard? Um, which, which story? Which, so which paper? this is Saturday Vanguard. Yeah, Vanguard. I don't see it here. I think I saw it somewhere else. Okay. But um, let's while we're here, let's look at. Oh, if you're talking of Asu, yeah. then it, it's it's in the nation, I believe. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. so let's because go. Because I think that's a very po uh, pertinent it is, it, issue it is as important. we speak. Yeah. And, and that's the lead story for the nation on Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, which is a story on page four. How Buari rejected Asu's demand for six months' salaries. Union says strike continues until our members are paid. Uh, academics advocate liberalization of university union. And the quote here uh, from Buari to the minister, you know, is cogent. Who compensates, who compensates students if varsity teachers are paid six month salaries for doing nothing? But I think that this has to be put in perspective, Absolutely. Abby. What the lecturers are saying is that unlike other workers, when they go on strike and they return, you can say that you won't pay them for five, six months that they didn't work. But in their own case, the moment that they return to the classroom, they will have to deal uh, with what they left the undone, backlog. the backlog. Because otherwise, if you say continue from where you are, it means that students will have lost six months anyway. But they still have to teach them right. uh, what they didn't do you know, for those six months. That's the argument of... Uh, the lecturers, but government is saying that it's a it's no work, no pay rule. But but this also speaks volumes about the understanding of the educational system <laughs> that the government has got. It's it's it almost does. embarrassing because I can almost see, I can immediately understand the stance of the of the lecturers yeah. because no matter what, I still have to catch up on the six months I've lost. Absolutely, that's just how it works. Because it will teach them. Otherwise, the, the yeah. student will have lost the, the whole session. If you're I, not careful. I, I think this is an issue that has been taken so lightly. Mm. This is you're talking about the future of, of kids who've been lying around for for six months. For six months now, um, since, since February, February, since uh, Valentine's Day, actually February fourteenth. And and that is. Know. Uh, I think that, you know, a holistic approach will have to be considered. You know, you just have to approach this. I mean, we're dealing with how many universities, 49 public you know, you know, institutions. The state universities are basically um, uh, showing understanding to ASU. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, LASU and a number of other state universities are not, uh, are not part, right. you know, of this thing. Is, is there a way that we can use the examples of the private universities and then some state universities who are not part of this, yeah. you know, uh, 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 as to uh, uh, stronghold, you know, on the government. And, and what is the issue that the government is unable to? If this is the last straw, are you saying that if, they are, if the lecturers are re ready to return to work, you are not going to pay them their outstanding? If you do not pay them their outstanding, what happens to a whole session? that the students will have mm. lost. And, and unfortunately, this just drags the situation out even further, and there's absolutely no time for that. There's no time for that. This is well, part of the issues that we're talking about, you know, with Ajiri the other time, that, mm. you know, success is not recorded only by just brick and mortar. You know, deal with the ASU issue, and let's see if, if, if there can be resolution at least. Absolutely. All right. All right, Abby, that brings us to, that brings us to the end of the morning show today. Thank you for watching, and do stay safe. I'm Steve Ayoridi. And I am Abby Olawi from the entire team here in Lagos, Nigeria. Enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of your day. Goodbye.